Terry Skiverton, um, player, manager, assistant manager, um, caretaker manager, assistant manager, head of coaching, academy manager, assistant manager, and then done. Before the game? Well, you know, I'm really nervous and I'm quite scared, actually. <laughs> nah, if we do it today, we do it today, but we've got, you know, we've got five games to do it, so whether it be today or whether it not be today, it's going to... In this division, and, you know, deservedly going up to the third division before we attack going towards the last couple of games. Put all over the place, but he's turned out to be one of our best signings ever. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'll tell you what, you're the worst director ever in your history. <laughs> Coming to the end of the film. And an explosion of noise is about to happen here. Who said Sleepy Somerset didn't love his football? Yeovil Town are on their way to Wembley. So, to set off Yeovil celebrations. A lovely shot. Terry Skiverton, once on the books of Chelsea, had some league experience with Wigan Wanderers, steps out now with his manager and just listen to the ovation. Yeah, we was, um, Colin Lippiot signed me, God rest his soul, he was a, a, a great fella, good manager at Yeovil and um, run the club quite close, I think they come third, maybe third or fourth in the conference the year before. Uh, I just left Welling out on the back of a really good season, uh, a chance arose for me to come to Yeovil, um, I knew a couple of players, a boy called Dean Chandler, um, Ben Smith, so I ended up coming down and uh, I think it was only three months, three or four months into the season, Colin left and then Dave Webb came in and he wanted to make the club full time, wanted to change the mentality, change the focus, change um, and sort of rejig because I think John Fry was really wanting the club to move forward and, and in the current state of just one night a week and then playing on a Saturday wasn't enough to sustain or to try and stay in Football League status and um, Dave Webb came in. And I think the only reason why he made me captain was because I was a young apprentice when he was at Chelsea and I was only the name, well, I was the only name that he'd ever heard of. So he said, I'm going to make you captain and he hadn't even seen me play. So that was my, that was my chance to stake a claim to become the Oval's captain. Yeah, I think once being given the role with uh, Dave Webb, I felt a, a pressure and... Um, it was an overriding factor of making sure that I always sort of would put my body on the line, but to, to try even harder, to, to work even harder, to show the players that I was a, a driving force behind them. And I was always with them as well. And no matter how bad they do or how well they would do, they would get both sides from me. So if they needed to be livened up, I would tell them. But also when they'd done something good, I'd be right alongside them as well. And I would always be there to help them. If they're going through a bad spell, I would sit down, I would talk with them. And I felt that that was probably the biggest part of my leadership as a player was, I mean, Gary was very clever because when Gary Johnson took over, he made us all move into the area. So we came really tight, really close. And then it was just everybody used to call me Skip, Skip, Skip. And then it became just normal really and then for me um, that year we won the trophy we didn't quite make it in the league because uh, we was competing with Boston who uh, under Steve Evans was given a lot of unsustainable money I think they had a squad of 23 24 players at the end very good players where you only had 11 to choose from it was almost like a the way that the big clubs do it now and um, we couldn't quite catch them because we didn't have the resources at the time but that cup run was really special because that was the first time us as a group won something. And when you win something as a group and you get to keep that group together, um, you can always go on from strength to strength. And when we got there, it was 
you know, it was a catalyst for us to, to really kick on as individuals, as a team, but also as a football club with the supporters as well. It was very clever, really, and Gary did it again the year we got promoted from the Championship, where I think we got, I can't remember what round it was, but we got to a round and then Stewie just brought a camera in and he said, right, this is going to be um, documentation of the footage of us winning it. So all of a sudden, the game. well, you know, I'm really nervous and I'm quite scared. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> nah, if we do it today, we do it today. But we've got, you know, we've got five games to do it. So whether it be today or whether it not be today, it's gonna. You see that <laughs> little pony's tail. Yeah. The end of the pony tail. Stand up. Give the camera away. So all of a sudden, the questions that were being asked were. You know, when we win the trophy, what are you going to do? So now all of a sudden you started to call it on yourself. So I remember he did, uh, he came around with the, the, the video camera, I think it was maybe before the semi-final. Um, was it against Burton, I think? Was it like maybe a double-legged? Yeah. And he was talking about what we was going to do, what the atmosphere would be like, be like, how we was going to... So it was almost like subconscious psychology because we'd be sort of picturing ourselves winning, picturing ourselves competing, almost preempting what was going to happen within the game and uh, and we, we won the two the two semi-final the two legs at Burton and then when we went to the final we did the same again in the hotels where we was all in the rooms. Room 242 we see Lee Johnson and Terry Skiverton. Um Lee can you tell me a little bit about how you got to the football club Yeovil Town? Well um, initially I was going to uh, I was all set I'd just been just walked out of Brighton and uh, he's got a great pair of legs as you can see Scarface he always gets <laughs> cut, cut all over the place but he's turned out to be one of our best signings ever <laughs> I'm running out of film I'll tell you so. the worst director ever, ever <laughs> in the history <laughs> coming to the end of the film Terry Terry have a good game I've got quite happy with what I've got at the minute I mean I'm just glad we've got promotion and uh, you can go on about golden boots and whatnot. but I'm delighted with what I've got now and you know, God rest his soul, Adam Stansfield saying he was going to run until he dropped. You know, me saying that we just trusted in our training and everything that we was going to do tomorrow. And we really talked ourselves into a camera to believe that we were going to win. And the psychology behind that from Gary Johnson and from Stewie, because he did it a few times and, um, and, and it was a real powerful tool and a powerful thing to get everybody to buy together, um, to buy into an idea of going there and winning. And the day before when we walked round and uh, Villa Park and we had the atmosphere and then we were still filming, we're talking. So we really took our minds off of the anxiety and everything that surrounded it. And all we focused on in our little bubble was the processes of what we was going to do to win that game. And even for a non-league team back there, we was, we was ahead of the curve. It's a moment when 108 years of waiting came to an end. The news came through. in many ways that he is the man of the match today and he is talking now to our reporter <laughs> I think it was, when I look back, it was probably the best football inside that I played in um, for like pure football, for the level. We were so much better than everybody else and um, we played 3-5-2 uh, and it was Jackson and Gaul up front, then it was, I think it was Gavin Williams that used to play um, off the front but would come back in to make it as a three. So it was almost like a two and a one, and then it would flick to a three out of possession. And he was, um, he was magnificent that year. And we had the pace with Nick Crittenden on one side. I think it was Abdel El Cote on the other side. And uh, Michael McKindo that uh, shared that sort of, you know, every time, I, I mean, Maka played quite a lot of games, but Abdul would just, would just come in. 
and we just seem to have pace, energy, a real good youthful look to us. But also there was people like Colin Miles, um, myself, Lockie, that really sort of kept the team together behind because with Darren and with Lee Johnson, you had um, players with, I call it small man syndrome, where they thought that they were Rottweilers, but really they were, <laughs> they were like little terriers and they would go and start trouble, but they didn't realise that it was always us that was having to, to pick up the mantle and stand up to the opposition when they used to give it. Because I always remember a real tricky situation was um, a goalkeeper, Butler, got sent off for Halifax and we was at Dorchester at the time. And uh, as he, he got sent off against um, Abdullah Demba, and as he was walking in, Darren Way said to this guy's like six foot three, as wide as he is big, I mean like an animal of a, a human being. And as he walks past, Darren says, oh, you can borrow my shower gel if you want, mate. So he turns around and starts to go for Darren. So then I step in and then I get a few brands. So I'm going to push three or four people off. Darren gets off scot free. The goalkeeper gets sent off. Demba gets sent off and I got sent off as well. So I end up having to go back to the changing room with this big guy that Darren had started trouble with. So, and Darren and Lee used to do that quite a lot. And normally I, uh, us at the back had to be the enforcers to overstep them. Yeah, I think when, when we were players, you had, um, Lee was always trying to overcome the opposition. We always say, oh, you only play because you're the manager's son. So we always had to prove that, which he did do. Um, then you had Darren as well, that was led by example, really passionate, uh, would compete for every ball. And you had like a real good balance between him and Lee, where Lee was a bit more technical, um, was clever thinking. And Darren could do that as well, but Darren was more the enforcer to look after Lee, you know, because Lee wasn't a big tackler. Darren was a big tackler for his, for his height and his, and, and his size. And um, they really complemented each other so well, but, but Darren was a driving force as well. Darren was always uh, on set plays, free kicks, wanting to take penalties. And I think until Phil Jevons come on, he always took penalties. And he was just real infectious. But also, you know, you have people like him, Gavin Williams, Michael McKindo, I mean, their mind, was, their mind never stopped. It was always on the go, always on the next thing. Couldn't sit still in a room, you know, like really agitated, always, you know, always on it, always ready, but they train really hard, especially Darren. Uh, and he made sure that he drove the team forward. A lovely shot. Terry Skiverton, once on the books of Chelsea, had some league experience with Wigan Wanderers, steps out now with his manager and just listen to the ovation. Johnson with the corner kick on a free header in there. Lockwood getting a touch. Demba's in there. Lockwood again off the line. Desperate for Wilkie, but it's gone in. Terry Skiverton, the captain, with the final header in off the post. His fifth goal of the season. And what a spell towards the end of this first half. Be a last opportunity to try and win this game at the death. Will commit plenty forward. Northampton bring everybody back as the corner goes in. He drops it for Skipper turn. And Yeovil Skipper, the man of the match on the night, has won this game for Yeovil. Well, Northampton are deflated. But Terry Skiverton, they have given Yeovil, should have given Yeovil, their first victory in nine games. Takes and Skiverton's got to it, and Yeovil have an early lead. And their captain shows the way, the way to goal. Johnson powers it in, Stalkers was near post, and Skiverton has put it in. And the leaders lead as Terry Skiverton scores his second of the game. And Yeovil will always be special to me. Well, what a centre half he's turning out to be. Different corner drilled in, it was meant. Good finish from a centre-half.